Well, praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Can we actually do it this time? Can you stand to your feet and give God the best praise that you have? I can't hear you. Anybody got a better praise than that? Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, we had to get through a lot to get in here tonight. But tell them, since we're here, I'm getting ready to get my praise on. Are y'all ready? Come on, clap those hands like this. Come on. Hey, hey. Where the balcony at? Can I hear the balcony? Come on, come on. Everybody clap your hands. Come on. Can you put a smile on your face? We're going to get a little dip like this tonight, all right? It's an easy song. We're going to do it corporately. Song says, Lord, you are awesome. the church said. Come on, y'all. Come on, y'all might as well get loose. Come on, let me hear you say it. Everybody together say, Lord. Lord awesome. Come on, everybody say, Lord. Lord, Lord awesome. hey, he keeps on breaking away. Said tonight, if it wasn't for your love, wasn't for your, love, wasn't for your grace, wasn't for your grace I, don't know, I don't know where I'd be without you. I want you to sing it to the Lord. If it wasn't for your love, if it wasn't for your grace, I don't know where I'd be without you. Come on, church, and say. Just say, Lord. Lord you now come on, testify. If it wasn't for your love, wasn't for your grace, I don't know, I don't know where I'd be without you. I don't know where I'd be without you. Anybody grateful for the grace of God tonight? Come on. If it wasn't for your love, oh, for your grace, for your I don't know, I don't know where I'd be without you. Everybody say, Lord. See y'all sway, come on. Say love. He keeps on making the way. Everybody just say love. Come on, one more time. Tell them if it wasn't for your love, wasn't for your love. Wasn't for you, but I don't know. I don't know where I hey, hey, hey. Come on, let me see you through it. Everybody say, Lord, you ought to wave those hands if you believe it. Come on. Was it for your grace? I don't know. Listen, I would be messed up tonight if it wasn't for your love. Was it for your grace? I don't know. Here we go. For my praise, for my praise. Clap your hands. Come on. Hey, hey. I'm looking for my praises. Where my praises at tonight? Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I know you might not know me, but tell them I got a serious testimony. And I'm gonna tell it in this song. Are you ready? This is what I want you to tell them. Tell them, say, you uh, I keep on making a way. You uh, I keep on making a way. You uh, I keep on making a way. Hey, you uh, I keep on making a way. Say, you come on, keep on making a way. Say, you. And you uh, keep on picking me up. 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 Said you, come on, keep on picking me up. Come on, you. I like you. Keep on picking me up. You keep on picking me up. That's when I get messed up. 
when I say this. Listen, uh, and you uh, I keep on saving my life. Uh, you uh, I keep on saving my life. Uh, you uh, I keep on saving my life. Uh, you uh, I keep on saving my life. Say, you keep on saving my life. Come on, you. Tonight, keep on saving my life. Keep on saving my life. Nobody but Jesus said, I keep on saving my life. Anybody want to tell him thank you? Because you keep on saving my life. Now, come on, everybody just clap your hands. Come on, everybody just clap your hands. You got to sing this like you mean to tell them that you I keep on. You keep on picking me up, say You keep on picking me up You keep on picking me up You tell them keep on picking me up Come on You keep on picking me up 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 You keep on making a way Keep on making a way And then you keep on saying you keep on saving my life. I said you keep on saving my life. Here we go. I said you keep on saving. Keep on saving my life. Yeah, 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 yeah. You gotta say that with us tonight. I said you. I said you keep on saving my life. Keep on saving my life. Somebody praise him if he saved your life. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Come on and bless God's holy name. It's good to be in the house of the Lord at least one more time. Hallelujah. To my friends, Pastor Sharp, Lady Bree, thank you so much for having me. Um, you may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Today, you know, we've been taking this walk of shame or walking us out of shame. Uh, we're going to use the title, Before I Let Go. God, we love you. We bless you. We believe in you. We trust what you're doing in our life, God. Speak to us. If you don't give us an explanation, give us some understanding. You said your word would not return unto you void. And we know that you are not a man that you should lie, nor the son of man that you should change your mind, nor the shade room that you might expose us, nor a city girl that you might scam us, or a Kia boy that you might steal from us. It's in your servant's prayer name we pray. Amen. Amen. So we come to the text right here, and we get to see a different sight than we've seen before. Right now, we're at the cross, and we get to see everything that's going on. It's really a hot mess. They got some people gambling for Jesus' clothes, some people trying to find out who's going to be the head Negro in charge, and then you have the beloved disciple at the foot of the cross, and I really can appreciate that because the beloved disciple is about to get a responsibility that many of us probably could not have handled. Jesus is about to give the beloved disciple something that matters a lot to him. And it makes sense that Jesus would give this responsibility to him because when he looks at the foot of the cross, the beloved disciple is there. It's not about the people who are with you hanging out. It's, with the, it's about the people who are with you when you're hanging. You have to trust the people at the cross to do what they need to do beyond the cross. And it's John who's sitting here. It's John who's sitting here when it looks like failure. And if somebody can be with you when it looks like failure, you can give them a little bit of the future. Of all the things that we see in this text, I don't want us to miss that this is about provision. I know that it doesn't seem like it. It ain't no houses, no cars. It's not no fish or no bread. But this text is really about provision. 
at the cross. It is Jesus who gives his last will and testament. And this is actually not that big of a deal. They are used to people sharing or giving their assets to someone. But what's important in this text is that we give away things when we die, but Jesus valued people most. It was difficult for me to believe this, but the language solidifies the relationship that's here. It's legal language. It would be a testamentary disposition that he would give in this moment. And when I think about my own will and estate planning, I change it every now and then when I get mad at the kids and I let them come in so they can see me take them out of it. And when I'm there and I'm at the lawyer for estate planning, one thing I noticed is that I was always trying to make sure they would have stuff. But Jesus valued people more than things. And it makes sense because when my sister was dying, she had been sick for 17 years. And I remember the, time, the last time she went to the hospital before the time that she died, we went to go take my niece to see her. And she tells my niece, I would like to make this cute, but I don't have enough time. She said, when I die, there are going to be a lot of people who are going to be willing to care for you. Sometimes it's going to be for money. It'll be for a whole lot of reasons. You're going to want to be with somebody who's going to be fun. You're going to be with somebody who's going to let you do what you want to do. But I need you to go with Mama and Titi. She said, when I couldn't feed you, who was there? It was Mama and Titi. She said, when I couldn't do what you need, who was there? She said, even right now, there's no surgery. There's nothing special happening. I'm just sitting here laying ill. And it's Mama and Titi who's there. She said something that I'll never forget. She said, I want you to let the people who cared for me care for you. That's what's happening in this text. He didn't have no rookie, somebody he didn't know how they were acting. He didn't get Peter cutting people's ears off. He has the beloved disciple who he knew would take care of his mother. And I appreciate this text because something amazing is about to happen. Mary's life is about to change, change drastically. Without her son to fill this void, she knows she's going to be, maybe you would call her empty nester, but in the middle of disappointment, without preparation, in the midst of mourning, there is a drastic and unexpected trade. I was watching uh, 30 for 30 on ESPN and James Harden was there. He went to Arizona State like I did. And I will never forget, he was playing for the Oklahoma City Thunder. He had taken them to the finals and he's about to have a large contract. I mean, bills on bills on bills. And he told, they told him, they gave him a short amount of time. I think it was like an hour to make a decision, but he didn't make the decision, but he knew he had done right by them and he had taken care of the team. He made relationships. He got them to, to the um, championship without even having a big contract so he knew they would have time for him. Well, he missed the deadline. They called him and said, well, Mr. Harden, we thank you for all you've done. We appreciate where you've been able to get us, but unfortunately, we're going to go in another direction. We're trading you to the Houston Rockets. Not only did they say they were trading him to the Houston Rockets, they were also going to make sure he was not the sixth man anymore. He was sixth man of the year, and he loved playing his position. So he says he was distressed that night. He had a hard night, couldn't sleep. He was tearful. He wakes up the next morning, goes to spend time with the Houston Rockets. The Houston Rockets tell him, the reason you're no longer going to be the sixth man is because you're going to be the franchise player. And I guess I just came to tell you every now and then, you ought to trust God's trade in value. You ought to trust that when God takes you out of one hand, God has a better hand for you to go into. You can trust what God is doing in a trade-in. God has traded sorrow for joy. God is going to trade everything you need for everything you didn't think you could get. This was not, this was not Jesus' last trade. Jesus will trade your chaos for peace, your brokenness for wholeness, your sickness for wellness, your stress for rest. Jesus will take your mourning and turn it into dancing. You let everybody else worry about the money. You let them gamble over his clothes and celebrate his death. But when we look for you, we need to find you at the cross because you don't have to chase money because where there's provision, there doesn't need to be money. Where there's provision, there's healing. Where there's provision, there's life. Where there's provision, there's peace of mind. You don't go hungry with provision. You don't have to be helpless with provision. You won't need a hot girl summer with some provision. You ain't got a scam with provision. You ain't got a lie on those applications with provision. The Bible says the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but I've come that you might have life and that more abundantly, and that is provision. We have to get to the point where we know that when God takes something away from us, there is an upgrade. Mary loses his son, but we gain the savior of the world. God is making provision for you. And I know money feels good and I want a whole lot of it too. But if I don't have money, I got a savior that will provide for me. 
I know many of us spend time chasing money and chasing things, but do not forget that Jesus valued people more than things. You got to let other people chase money because provision is at the foot of the cross. The last time we talked about what it meant to be like Christ. I said being like Christ is not about who you cut off. It's about who you keep. But today I want to tell you to be a friend to Jesus. It's not about who's hanging with you when you win. It's about who's with you when you're hanging. Come on and help me thank God for our Jesus talk lecturer, Dr. Brianna Parker. Come on, fellowship. Come on, Chicago. Show some love. Is there anybody just glad to be in the number tonight? Do me a favor and hug two or three people. You don't have to know them. Tell them what's up. Good to see you. Glad you made it. Spread some love around the sanctuary. Come on, even in the balcony. Y'all... Y'all spread some love up there. Spread some love in the balcony. Yes. I'm so excited. Y'all make some noise for Jesus tonight. Come on, no, that was cute. I said, let's make some noise for Jesus. Our savior, our keeper, our sustainer. You may be seated. I'm so elated that you have come out to this last night of Jesus week. All week long, it's been amazing. Can we thank God for every preacher, every speaker. Melvin Chris Bell has been with us all week long. Y'all show my brother some love. Just killing us left and right. And then help me thank God for all the people behind the scenes that have made Jesus Week possible. The staff, the media team, armor bearers, security, parking lot ministry, culinary ministry, medical ministry. Come on, y'all, clap it up for everybody. Music ministry, thank y'all so, so much. Maintenance ministry. Come on, help me thank God for our maintenance ministry. Is there overflow tonight? Is there overflow? Can we thank God for all of those down in the champion's room in overflow? Come on, show some love to them. Thank you for not leaving. I understand. It is quite tempting. It's quite tempting. But I dare you to stay because there's something special in the house today just for you. Pastor Keon Henderson is back. Come on, let him know. Let him know. Let him feel it. Lady Shawnee is back. <laughs> We're so happy that our big brother, our big sister are back. I know it's a serious night because Pastor Vassa got stripes on. I know. Oh, I saw you. Did you see him stepping up here early? <laughs> he put on his stripes tonight. It's a serious situation. We give it up. Come on, show some love to Pastor Vassa, powerful leader. Pastor of our worship and arts, I love you, man. It's giving time, church. It's giving time. Our deacons are coming to stand in the aisle. We don't have to be in church long to experience God, do we? And so we're moving with, uh, we are moving with purpose tonight. It is our only night where we are communing together. Everybody say Monday Thursday. Monday Thursday. M A U D Y. Monday. Thursday. That word Monday comes from the root word mandate. The communion that Jesus shared with his disciples took place on what we now call Monday Thursday. It is not an option. Jesus said, do this. It's a mandate. He said, do this in what? Remembrance of me. And so momentarily we will be sharing the Lord's Supper together as Christ did with his disciples on this Monday Thursday. I'm so grateful that each and every one of you are here. Get your best seed in your hand and let's sow. There are seven ways to give on the screen. Thank you for those of you watching on the virtual ship. Shout out to all the virtual ship viewers tonight. It means the world that you've tuned in with us tonight and we say thank you. There are seven ways to give. Some of you like me don't carry cash anymore. Where my millennials and Gen Zers. Uh-huh. Some of us have never signed a check in our lives. 
And so to make life easy for you, there's seven ways to give. There's Zelle, there's Cash App. You can give by PayPal and Shelby Next Giving app is the app that we use here at the church. Lift your phone, your iPhone to the Lord. Lift your check, your cash to the Lord. Whatever you have, just lift it as high as you see yourself going. And if you don't have anything to give tonight, lift your hand to the Lord because I speak over you. This is the last time you come to church and don't have something to give. That God is going to restore finances in your life so you will be blessed and a blessing. Repeat after me loudly, Lord, I trust you. And I believe if I give, it's coming back. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, deacons. There's a deacon in every aisle. There's a deacon up in the balcony. There's a deacon in the overflow. If you're giving tangibly, bring that seed now at this time down the aisle. If you're giving virtually or digitally, you can sow that seed from your seat. Come on, praise team. Bless us. Right here. Keep so making, keep so making away. Everybody say over. Over. Always bringing me out. Always bringing me out. Yes, sir. Everybody say over. Over and over again. Lord, you've done. Lord, you've done so much. All to you I owe. All to you I owe. Uh, I will ever. I will never sing your praise. Glory. Glory to your name. Because it keeps on. Keeps yeah. on making while you're sitting there, clap those hands. Keep so making a way. Yeah, 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 yeah. Everybody say over. Over. Oh, yeah. And over again. Always bringing me out. Always bringing me out. Huh. I want to thank you. Everybody say over. Over. And over again. Lord, you done. Lord, you've done so much. Oh. All to you, I owe. All to you. Come on, church, tell them, I will ever sing your praise. I will ever sing your praise. Glory. Glory to your name. Because it keeps on. Keeps on making your way. Glory. Here we go, here we go. Everybody say, keeps on. Keeps on. Making your way for me. Open the doors for me. Open the doors for me. Take care of me. Take care of me. Everybody say, keeps on. Keeps on. Say keep up. Yes, sir. Open it up for me. Take the care of me. Now tell us what you got to say. Come on. Keep up. Keep up. Take it away for me. Open it up. Open it up for me. Do I have any tenors in the building? Come on, tenors. Let me hear you say. Keep up. Keep up. Take it away for me. Yes, sir. Come on, if he's made a way for you, act like it. Put those hands together. He didn't just find a way, he made a way. Yes, sir. Keep on. Come on and let's give God praise for being a way maker. Oh, 
I want to just move on, but I got to say it one more time. Can we give God praise for being a way maker? Don't fool me now. Y'all holler back at the preacher and say, I know that's right. I, know. I was stuck sometimes and he just made a way. Y'all be seated. I'm so grateful for so many guests and so many friends that are in the room tonight. Y'all help me show some love to my mama who just made it in today. Stand up, mama. Stand up. Y'all say, hey, mama Faye. Amen, amen. And then Breeze Mama made it in yesterday. Stand up, Mama Sullivan. Y'all say, what's up, Mama Sullivan? It's nothing like having your family with you. Ooh, some of us need to get our business straight with our family. Holding grudges, ain't called nobody, hadn't talked to them in a while. You don't know how much time you have. You better cherish your people while you got them. Because life is so unexpected. Pastor Eric Thomas, the pastor of Greater Harvest, my Chicago pastor is in the house tonight. Come on, Chicago. Come on, fellowship. Y'all know we one of the generals of the city. He's going to lead our time of communion together. But before we do that, I just want to center us. Jesus said, do this in remembrance of me. I, I, I've never been able to understand people that come to church and don't say amen one time. I just, I mean, sit there scrolling on their phone, no smile, no joy, no thanksgiving. Because when I remember, I ain't talking about last year, I'm talking about this year. Things that the Lord has done for me. There's a list too long to name. And as we enter into this communion moment, just remember. Remember that nothing else could have washed our sins away except his blood. Remember. Some scholars would say when he died, it was an act of substitutionary atonement. Preacher, that's a big word. I know. It just means he took your place. And I don't know about y'all, but I deserve death. The wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life. I don't know about y'all. I'm grateful for Jesus. I'm grateful that blood and love those words are interchangeable. They're synonymous because I can say that love reaches to the highest mountain. Love flows to the lowest valley. Love gives me strength. His love gives me strength from day to day and it'll never lose its power. Pause for a moment. Close your eyes and just get the cross on your mind. And thank God for Jesus. Thank you for covering my mess. Thank you that when I messed up and I was raggedy and my slip was hanging, you forgave me in spite of me. When others were determining my future based off of my past, you gave me grace. And you wiped the sleep clean and told me I could have a new day and a new chance and a new life through Christ. Some of my low moments were so low, I didn't know how I would make it, but Jesus stepped in. Tears wouldn't stop flowing, but Jesus stepped in. Friends walked away, family members passed, but Jesus walked in. You were sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, but the master of the sea heard your despairing cry. From the waters he lifted you and now safe am I Lord we just want to say thank you so as we commune together bless this moment breathe on this moment have your way and may we forever be grateful for the sacrifice of what real love looked like he didn't have to do it but we thank you that he did nobody took his life he laid it down for us so we thank you, Lord, for your son, Jesus, our Savior. Bless and breathe on us in this moment. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.
spill your juice on yourself. But when you think about it, tell the neighbor beside you on your left and your right, so he made space for me at the table. I hadn't always been perfect, but he made space for me at the table. I didn't always dress the way people wanted me to dress and address people the way they wanted me to address them, but he made space for me. I came from the south side. I came from the west side. I, I didn't get a college degree, but he made space at the table for me. And the blood still works. I'm sorry. But if I keep thinking about it, I'm going to get happy. I said it still works. Oh, he would not come down. Think about it. He would not come down. Come on, to say. Give the Lord praise. He decided. He decided. Glory to God. Yes, he did. Just the same little old me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. As we prepare to commune, the other week, about a month ago, I started having symptoms of a cold. Something was going on. So I went to the Walgreens to find something to fix my problem. So someone said, get some Tylenol. I got to the section where the Tylenol was at. There was Tylenol for colds and there was Tylenol for headaches. There was Tylenol for a few things. So I asked the pharmacist, I said, what's the best thing for me to get? He said, well, look, there's some Tylenol that handles many things. And they called it multi-symptom Tylenol. And over 2,000 years ago, Jesus went to the cross. And because he went to the cross, the blood that he shed cures everything. I want you to tell somebody the blood cures everything. And tell them whatever you need, all you need is the blood. The blood will fix your mind. The blood will fix your heart. The blood will fix your family. Tell somebody, I thank God for the blood. Look around at the house and say, I thank God for the blood. For if it wasn't for the blood, I would be miserable. And thanks be to God who gives us the victory. Through Jesus Christ. Just turn around one more time and tell somebody, I thank God for the blood. It fixes everything. It fixes cancer. It fixes high blood pressure. It'll fix whatever you have going on tonight. And the old folks said it like this, I plead the blood. Take your hand and just stretch it down your row and say, I plead the blood. And because I plead the blood, Everything on my road has to be delivered. Everything on my road will be set free. Not because I said it, but because the blood still works. Hey! Hallelujah! On the night that he was betrayed, Jesus took the proof. Hey, glory to God. It covers everything. It covers everything. Glory to God. Many of you may not know. Amen. A few weeks ago, I had part of my toe, one of my toes amputated. Amen. You don't know it because I'm covered tonight. <laughs> you can't tell because I'm covered. And the enemy tried to bring discouragement to my heart, but I thank God that my mind was covered by the blood. And because my mind was covered by the blood, my perception changed about my situation. When the blood is in your life, it'll change your perception. And I don't want to mess up here, and we're going to move on. But I told the devil, 
I know I lost a little bit of my tone. But can you tell, can I, can I tell you what I told the devil? And I want you to repeat that. I told the devil, I said, devil, I know I lost a little bit. But I have more left than I lost. Come on, tell somebody I got more left than I lost. Hallelujah. He took the bread and break it and he said, this represents my body, which was broken for you. He said, do this in remembrance of me. And so tonight we don't take this lightly. He says, when you come to me, when you come at the, to the table, he says, I don't want you to come because you're hungry. He says, if anybody's hungry, let them hungry at home. But tonight we do this because the blood, the body of Jesus Christ was broken and the blood shed for us. So in Jesus' name, let us all commune together. Now, now, now as you, thank you. Now as you, do, do like the old folk, they told us when you took the bread, you ought to just tell them thank you for it. And in the same like manner, he took the cup and he said, this cup represents the blood and the new covenant that I've made with you. And I'm so glad tonight that this blood still works. It's not the blood of bullocks, but the blood of the lamb that was shed for us. Let us commune in the name of the Lord Jesus. Come on, let's give the Lord a big shout of praise for the blood. God bless you. Come on, somebody say, thank God for the blood. At the end of every row, there's a bucket. At the end of the row, to my far right, to my right, your far left, there's a bucket. If you'll be so kind to pass it all the way down, all the way down your row. And after you pass that remainder from communion down, say this with me, I represent Christ. And I represent Christ everywhere I go. And I hug somebody and say, the blood is multi-symptom working. Come on, it works on multiple things at the same time. Oh, it reaches. I know we didn't plan that one. To the high. Y'all know this song? Come on. Come on, we can't stay here too long because we'll mess up. It flows, flows to the lowest valley. Oh, yeah. Oh, the blood that gives me strength from. be seated if you can if you can lose oh it's high you can sit down if you can if not you can stand it reaches it reaches how high does it reach church Come on, Melvin, help me sing it. It flows. It flows to the
sing with you. Never lose. It will never lose. I've seen it work over and over and over and over and over. Still saving, still healing, still way making, miracle working. It will never lose. No, never lose, never lose, never lose, never lose this power. Say never lose, yeah. No, 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 never lose its power. Come on, help us say never. I'm healed because of the blood. I'm saved because of the blood. I'm delivered because of the blood. Never lose. Nothing can shake me. Oh, because of the sacrifice of the lamb that was slain for the sins of the world. Who oh, never, who oh, never, never lose. I'm a witness, it'll never, 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 never lose. Yeah. Anybody grateful? Anybody thankful? Yeah, never lose. What would I do with the house of love? Pastor Keon D. Henderson is a true luminary in the realm of faith and leadership. As the founder, CEO, and senior pastor of the Lighthouse Church and Ministries, Pastor Keon has ignited a powerful movement of faith and transformation in Houston, Texas, and beyond. With five vibrant campuses and a rapidly expanding online ministry, reaching over 15,000 dedicated members and touching the lives of over 900,000 unique weekly viewers worldwide. A stellar award nominee and best-selling author, Pastor Keon's impact extends far beyond the pulpit. Recognized by the John Maxwell Institute as one of the top 250 leaders in the nation and nominated for a CNN Heroes Award, Pastor Keon's influence transcends boundaries, inspiring people from all walks of life to embrace their fullest potential. Let's prepare to receive from the music ministry of guest psalmist Melvin Crispell III. And the next speaking voice you will hear is Pastor Keon D. Henderson. Excuse me, y'all. I get excited about the blood and how he saved my life. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, let's praise him together. Come on, get up on your feet if you can and clap your hands. Oh, magnify the Lord for he is worthy to be praised. Oh, magnify the Lord for he is worthy to be praised hosanna blessed be the rock blessed be the rock of my salvation hosanna blessed be the rock 
Blessed be the rock of my salvation. Everybody say, oh. Oh, magnify the Lord. For he is. For he is worthy to be praised. So grateful. Oh, magnify the Lord. For he is. Say Hosanna. Hosanna. Blessed be the rock. Blessed be the rock. And it's my salvation. Hosanna. Blessed be the rock. Blessed be the rock of my salvation. Come on, everybody say, Oh, magnify. Oh, magnify the Lord. For he is worthy. Oh, magnify the Lord. Everybody say, oh, blessed be the rock, blessed be the rock of my salvation. Hosanna, celebrate him. Blessed be the rock of my salvation. Come on, lift it. Hosanna. Oh, blessed, blessed be the rock of my salvation. Ooh, Hosanna. Yeah. Blessed be the rock. 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 Blessed be the rock of my salvation. He is the rock, the solid rock I stand. I gotta depend on him. I gotta lean on him. Oh, blessed be the rock. Say worthy is the rock. Anybody know he's worthy? Anybody know he's worthy? Anybody know he's worthy of all the praise, of all the glory, and all the honor? Worthy is the rock. Now say holy is the rock. Anybody know he's holy? He's set apart. My God is sovereign. He can do whatever, whatever he wants. And I'm so glad that he decided to hang there for me, to die for my sins. Where would I be? Oh, holy is the rock. Oh, holy is the rock. Oh, holy is the rock. I serve a holy God. Holy and righteous is his name. Holy and righteous is his name. Anybody know his holy? Anybody know his holy? I said, holy is. Come on, say Jesus is the rock. I said, Jesus is the rock. I said, Jesus is the rock. I dare somebody to call his name. Call him like you need him. Call him like you want him. Jesus is the rock. Jesus is the rock. He's Mary's baby. Oh, Jesus is the rock. Yes, he is. Oh, I say, Jesus, 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 Jesus. I come from the old church where the saints used to call him till they showed up before the miracles. Jesus, Jesus, I need more power. I need more oil. I need more strength. Call him, call him, Jesus. If you need some comfort, if you need so peace, Jesus, 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 he's a saint yesterday, right now, forevermore. Jesus, 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 I'll call him till he shows up. I'll call him till he shows up. Jesus, wow. Everybody clap your hands. Come on, I need everybody in the room. Call his name, Jesus. Yeah, Jesus. Yeah, Jesus. 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 The rock I stand all over the ground. It's sinking. It's sinking. It's sinking. Sand. I'm glad I'm standing on a firm foundation. He is the way. He is the truth. He is the life. King of kings. Lord 
Son of Lord, ruler, helper, redeemer, waymaker. Oh, yes, he is. Oh, yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Jesus. 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 Everybody clap your hands. So we say, Hosanna, blessed be the rock, blessed be the rock of my salvation. Hosanna, blessed be the rock. Blessed be the rock of my salvation. Jesus, 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 there is something about that name. Master, Savior, Jesus, like the fragrance that comes after the rain. Will somebody call his name Jesus? Jesus, oh Jesus, let all heaven and earth proclaim that kings and all of their kingdoms they will all pass away but there's something but there's something but there is something about that name. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. And what can make me whole again? Oh. Nothing but the blood of Jesus Singing, oh precious is that flow That makes me white as snow There is no other fount I know Nothing but the blood. Nothing but the blood. Nothing but the blood. I said there's nothing but the blood of Jesus. And great is thy faithfulness. Come on, is that anybody's testimony? Oh, great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. And all I have, I have needed his hand as already. Come on, lift up your hands and say, Great is the faithfulness. Yeah, great is the faithfulness. Lord, heart to, to me. Come on, if you're glad about it. If you're glad about it. If you're glad about it, 
if you're glad about it, great is his faithfulness unto me. Morning by morning, he allows me to see new mercy. Mercy after mercy, grace after grace. Oh, I'm so grateful. Hallelujah. Touch two people and tell them I'm grateful. I'm grateful. I'm grateful. I'm grateful. I might not be rich, but I'm grateful. Yeah. Might not own the house yet, but I'm grateful. Don't drive the car that I want, but I'm grateful for the one I got. I want to hear the sound of gratitude in this room. Anybody grateful? To God our Father, to Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, to the Holy Spirit, our comfort and our guide, to the angel of this house, would you help me to praise God for the honorable, amazing preaching machine, Pastor Reggie Sharp. Come on and praise God for him. And to his amazing wife our sister come on and praise god for lady Bree. we love you i wanted to let you and pastor know that y'all mama is kind of here to see me i just i just don't want to i just come I mean, if it was for y'all they would have been here already so i just want you to know that they came to see me you know what i'm saying because those th those are my mamas y'all I asked, I asked your mom, I said, we going out to eat after church or what? Those are my girls. Y'all praise God for their mothers. Thank you so much. Love y'all. Can y'all help me praise God for my wife who's right here with me through this journey? And um, May the 7th, May 7th, uh, she has her first book coming out called Undefeated. And um, if you got Audible or anything like that, you can download it for pre-order right now, so you'll be the first one to get it. Um, it is an amazing book. Um, it tells a story that she hasn't told yet, and, and it is an ama amazing literary work. If I were you, I wouldn't wait until it got on New York Times list to get it. I'd be one of the first ones that can post and say, I had it before y'all even knew about it, amen? And so I, I would get that May 7th, that book drops. She's going on a crazy multi-city speaking tour. Um, so I just, I just can't wait to see what God does through her. Hey Amen. I, I, um, I wrote this book called The Shift. And um, if, if we have time, Pastor, after service, I'll stay behind and, and sign the ones that we have. Um, but this book I wrote in probably one of the worst seasons of my life. And uh, the first chapter, I couldn't figure out what I wanted to talk about. So the first chapter, I named it Death, Divorce, and Daddy Issues. I can tell by the way you responded, the book is worth the first chapter for you because you might got all three like me. Um, and so I will, I will be uh, with you afterwards. Anybody got a birthday today? Anybody's got a birthday or this week? Anybody birthday just passed? Listen, I'm going to give you these. You, both of y'all come up. Lady in the orange vest and the young lady here in the, in the black. Y'all praise God for them. One for her and one for her. Happy birthday from us to you. God bless you. Happy birthday. Oh, I'm so glad to be here at Jesus Week. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. I was, I was trying to sing with Melvin, but you can't sing with him. He probably wondering what's wrong with us. There ain't nothing wrong with us. What's wrong with you? You don't sing no regular notes. You just sing in between and on top of every note, and he's looking at y'all like, sing with me. We can't. You are amazing, man. We appreciate you, and we love you, brother. Incredible. Incredible. 
thank God for Bishop Sion here with us and all of our team. I got a word that the Lord gave me, and I've been wrestling with it all day. Um, Y'all got your Bible? You got your app? If you ain't got one, the person next to you got one. Um, Y'all gonna pray for me. Genesis chapter 3, verse 8. I'm gonna go to four different passages of Scripture. So if you are not able to keep up, the audio team, the visual team, they already have it uh, on the screen so that you'll be able to see it. So we're going to go through it quickly to contribute to the brevity of time. But the Bible says in Genesis chapter 3, verse 8, and they heard a voice, not a voice, they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day and Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord amongst the trees of the garden. That's Genesis chapter three, verse eight. Let's go to Matthew chapter four, verse one. Then when Jesus led up of the spirit into the wilderness, he to be tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted for 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterwards hungry, verse three. And when the tempter came to him, he said, if thou be the son of God, turn these stones into bread. That's. Matthew chapter 4. The word wilderness in the original Greek is the word garden. So we find Jesus first in the Garden of Eden. Now we find him here in the Garden of Temptation. Let's go to Matthew 26, verse 36. Y'all still with me? Matthew. 26 and 36. The Bible says, Then cometh Jesus with them into a place called the Garden of Gethsemane and said unto the disciples, Sit ye here while I go yonder <laughs> to pray. Last verse. John 19, John 19, verse 41. The Bible says, now in the place where they, where he was crucified, there was a garden. So he creates in a garden he's tempted in a garden he's betrayed in a garden and he dies in a garden do me a favor tell your neighbor whatever you do guard your gardens you may be seated in the presence of the Lord. It is estimated that there are 2.4 billion Christians in the world. may seem like a lot, but the truth is that's only about 31.2% of the population, which means seven out of every 10 people you see don't believe in Jesus. Isn't that amazing? 
for those of us who are in this sanctuary and to all of you all in overflow and those who will see this later online, um, we have become so familiar with the gospel story that we can always almost predict how it's going to end even before the preacher gets to the end of the statement. We say stuff in church like God is good. Because we, we can anticipate how the story, if somebody were to talk about David and Goliath right now, you already know the giant gets hit in the head and he falls down to the ground and David later becomes king. Because you, you already know the gospel story. Follow me. Um, because we're so acquainted with it, we can anticipate how it's going to end. And in, in fact... Um, as a consequence, we as Christians view the Bible as nothing more than the litany of places, people, and parables. And so when you are familiar with the story, you actually stop listening to it. And then it loses its efficacy and power in your life. Because when you think you know something, you don't learn nothing. So I'm afraid that since we've been coming to Holy Week and Easter services all of these years, we think we already know the story. So we turn, turn our ears off because we already know how it ends. He died on Friday, stayed in the grave all night Friday night, stayed there all day Saturday stayed there all night but what early Sunday morning he gets up out of the grave not with some power but with all power and if you went to the kind of church I went to the pastor didn't stop there he said power to make you walk right <laughs> power to make you He died till the sun refused to shine. Died till the moon ran down in blood. My preacher would say he died until the earth reeled and rocked like a drunken man. It was the first time that the S-O-N outshined the S-U-N. See, I told you, you knew the story. But the truth is, the Bible is not sequential. It is synoptic. In other words, the Bible is not a storyline. It's a story circle. Which means that every part of the scripture is equidistant from the other. For this is not a book about many stories. This is many books. You know it, doctor, about one story. For when you are talking about Joseph, you are talking about Jesus. For Joseph is a type of Christ in that he was betrayed by his brethren. And yet in the end, he said, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. The scripture is not a storyline, it's a story circle, equidistant from every point, a circle, which simply means that in a circle, you can get anywhere from everywhere. <laughs> so, so when it relates to the scripture, it doesn't matter if I am in Job or Genesis. And by the way, I can prove to you that the scripture is not a storyline and nor is the canon uh, uh, prescribed for us in chronological order for after the book of Genesis actually comes the book of Job, then Exodus. 
but because we are those who digest stories, uh, the uh, writers put it in a place so that we might understand it. This is why John was written later than Acts, but Acts has to come and explain Jesus so we might understand him before we get to the apostles. I heard you say it earlier, Pastor. You said Jesus be the center. I think that's what Richard Smallwood was trying to get us to understand when he was saying, Jesus, be the center of my joy. And if you don't go that far back, you remember when Israel Holden said, Jesus, be the center. See, you're always off balance when Jesus isn't the center. When, when other things become the center, then you, you go back to God asking him to come and be in the center of it all. And, and, and let me tell you, the middle is very uncomfortable. Uh, in, anybody, when you book your airline tickets, you're trying to find a seat that's not in the middle. Because when you're in the middle, the left will rest on you and the right will will rest on you. I don't know who I'm talking to in here today, but God told me he's about to take you out of the center of it. And he's about to send you to the next dimension. Touch somebody and say, I'm on my way somewhere. Y'all still with me? We find Jesus in the Bible in many places. We find him at the pool telling a man who was on his bed for 38 years to get up and walk. And then he leaves. We see Jesus at a wedding feast of Cana of Galilee. He turns water into wine. His mama said, turn the water to wine. He said, woman, it ain't my time. She said, you gonna do what I told you to do. Do whatever he says. And then he leaves. We never see him at another wedding. We see Jesus in cemeteries with a man who was cutting himself with stone. Then he leaves and goes to the other side to teach the 5,000 and to feed them with two fish, five loaves, not including the women and the children. And then he leaves. But there is one place we see him go back to over and over and over and over again. We see our God in gardens. Come on, help me somebody. No wonder, no wonder Solomon says he is the rose of Sharon. No wonder Solomon says he is the lily of the valley. I never understood why they called him the lily of the valley until I saw a lily up close. If you ever see a lily, it has a skinny stem and the head of the lily hangs over and it has two leaves at the top. No wonder he's the lily of the valley because when you see him on the cross, his head is hanging and his arms are stretched out wide. Touch somebody and say, he's the lily of the valley. No, in John, he actually says, I am the vine and my father is the husband man. For his resume says he's a carpenter, but his biography says he's a gardener. Let me introduce you to the gardener, this Jesus who hates separation, but yet needs connection. My mother, I'm, I'm, I'm born and raised in Gary, Indiana, and I went, I'm, I'm actually from East Chicago, lived in the harbor, and, and when I was living on Alexander, we had a small garden out front. I'm about to help somebody. And, and, and my mama would grow tomatoes in the garden and she would pour spoiled milk and put eggshells in the garden. I'm like, mama, what are you doing? Why would you put something spoiled on something you want to eat? Said, mama, the milk stinks and the eggs stink. And my mama looked at me and changed my life. She says, son, the worse it smells, the more it's doing. I don't know who this word is for, but if there's anybody in here that has something in your life, just touch your neighbor and say, the worse it smells, the more he's doing. Now, if your neighbor didn't say anything, I'm telling you earlier, you got the wrong one. So I want you to look at him in your face and say, I tried you out, you didn't work. So if I don't talk to you the rest of the day, don't call me funny acting, I gave you the first chance. Now turn around and look at the other neighbor and say, if it stinks, 
it means God is doing something. If you're about to lose it, it means you're about to keep it. If it's going up, it's about to come down. If it's going down, it's about to come up because God is a God. That when it doesn't look good, when it doesn't smell good, when it doesn't feel good, God is working. All things work together. Oh, I wish I had somebody here that knew he was working. He was working. He was, he was working. God could have started all of creation anywhere he wanted to. He could have started it in a temple. He could have started it on a mountain. He could have started it on the sea, but he starts all of creation in the Garden of Eden. Are you with me so far? He starts it in a garden. He is a gardener. And then he creates man out of the dust of the earth, performs the first CPR episode and breathes into man the breath of life creates him out of dust breathes breath into him and then makes man allergic to dust no it's true it's true because if i took a pile of dust and put it in front of your nose and told you to sniff it in what would happen you would sneeze so he creates us out of dust makes us allergic to ourselves so we never get full of ourselves creates man out of the dust of the earth, <laughs> breathes into him the breath of life, and then man became a living soul. God loves to play in the dirt. So for all you clean Christians that got your nose stuck up at us, because you don't cuss no more, and because you don't drink vodka no more, and because... You don't chew gummies, you know, because your skirt is touching your ankles and because your hair ain't red and because you ain't got a tattoo on your back and you think you better than us. I came to tell you God will use you with your tattoo, with your 17 earrings in your left ear, with your nose piercing and your belly button attached to your kneecap. God will use you just like you are. That's why the church can't grow because we want everybody to think that they got to be clean to get inside of it. And what happens with most Christians is they get so far away from their sins, they think that can't nobody figure it out. But let me tell you something, just because your skirt ain't short today don't mean it wasn't a couple years ago. And, and let me help all of you all out who've been judged in the church. They wear the same thing you wear, they just do it out of town. Because when they go to Ver Vegas and put 50 on black, they wear the same skirt you got. Touch everybody around and say, you ain't no better than me. You ain't no better than me. I don't care how many songs you knew about that praise theme singer. You ain't no better than me. I don't care if you know hymns and I don't know. I don't know hymns, but I know him. You ain't no better. God creates Adam and Eve in the garden and then the devil comes in and distracts and the Lord told me the first garden you're going to have to guard is the garden of your creativity. How many people got that notepad on the nightstand? And every time you get ready to start checking off stuff, life start lifing. Come on. Every time you make up in your mind, I'm going to start reading books this year. Here comes something else. Every time you make up your mind, I'm going to start talking better. And then somebody make you cuss. And you said you weren't going to do that no more. Every time. Because the Bible, he is telling us in this, the devil wants to mess with your creativity. You better hear me. I realized a few weeks ago that the reason why the devil doesn't want you creative is because he ain't never created nothing. 
better hear what I'm telling you. So, so you got to think about it. God created the heavens and the earth. And although you may get great revelation for what I'm saying, you got to let it hit home. Satan has never created anything. And so he hates anything that can do what he cannot do because he can steal, kill and destroy. But you can create from the ground. So the devil wants to take your creative power because when you become non-creative, you become like him. That's why you have to stop having constructive conversations with destructive people. Matter of fact, I'm going to have you talk to your neighbor about seven more times a day. If you mess around and talk to a neighbor that don't talk to you, say you too destructive, you're distractive. I'm looking for somebody who's going to talk back to me. Why? Because one can chase a thousand, two can put 10,000 to flight. Can you find your hookup? Can you find your role member? Can you find your seat section partner right now? Find them. Because for the rest of the day, I want you to ignore everybody who ain't said nothing yet. Look your pew partner right in the eye and say, when I move... You move just like that. If I jump, you jump just like that. If I shout, if I give you a high five, give me one back because I'm going to kill the devil for you and I need you to show up for me. Look down your row and say, if you're quiet, go outside. As for me and my row, we're going to praise the Lord. Now let the redeemed of the Lord open up your mouth and shout in this place. You're not going to mess up my creativity. You're not going to make me think I can't do it. I don't care what you think about me. I am the handiwork of God. I am the righteousness of God. If I put my mind to it, I can do it. Stop wasting your creativity. who are destructive. So the problem with some of y'all is you sharing your dreams with somebody who's not happy you're a dreamer. And you can always tell it because every time you tell them what God doing for you, they got to turn around and tell you what God doing for me. Ain't nobody asks you what God doing for you. This is my time. This is my season. I'm trying to tell. I just met a boo. Why you got to tell me about your boo? If you were so happy about him, why you ain't tell me about him before I told you about mine? You got to watch this. And I'm getting ready to help you because the Bible says that Adam and Eve, after they have a destructive conversation in a constructive environment, that's chapter three. By the time you get to chapter four, their son Cain is being chased out of the same garden. Why? Because the conversation you have today will affect your seed tomorrow. What if I told you the next thing you say is going to affect your children? That's all you're going to say is, woo. If I was you, I'd be saying, I'm the head and not the tail. I'm above and never beneath. I just said, what the next thing you say is going to help your children and a thousand generations. Now, let me find out if there's anybody here believe the promises of God. I want you to begin to open up your mouth and begin to prophesy to yourself. I am rich. I am healthy. I am whole. I am healed. I am not depressed. I don't have anxiety. And I look fly. And I look good. Touch. Oh. Having constructive conversations with destructive people. The devil's gonna make you think you can't. That'll never work. Not a good idea. It's gonna cost too much. <laughs> Who, who's been through that? You, you're telling me, man, let me tell you what God's doing for me. Well, I don't know about that. You don't. You don't. I, I know you don't. I know you don't because, because, because seed begets after its own kind. See, see, whenever you share your dreams with people who throw you in pits, you recognize that you're now sharing your tomorrow with somebody who's stuck in the past. I'm trying to find somebody 
who's not going to keep talking about Friday every day. Someday you're going to have to start talking about early. Come on, somebody. Sunday morning. Can I just get somebody to get out of your Friday fit? Okay, you got a divorce. It's over. Matter of fact, let me just help some of y'all. You didn't go through a divorce. You went through a deliverance. Because had you stayed where you were, you wouldn't be where you are. I'm trying to find 200 people. I don't need all of y'all. I need 200 people to shout, Friday is over. I'm trying to get to resurrection season. Which leads me to the second garden you're going to have to guard. Jesus was in the garden. And we find him. And he's being tempted by the devil. And the Bible says, after 40 days, he breaks his silence and has a conversation with God. And when he breaks his silence and has a conversation with God, now he hasn't eaten in 40 days. Now, he's 100% man and God at the same time. So don't think that he went 40 days without eating and wasn't hungry. Listen, if I don't eat before today is over, who with me? Who gonna eat at least one more time today? And that's, that's a minimum. He hasn't eaten for 40 days. Let me ask you, what is your attitude like by two o'clock in the afternoon on the same day when you haven't eaten? So Jesus, although he is God, he's hungry. And you are not you when you're hungry. And here come the devil talking this foolishness while he's hungry, which lets us know that you have to be careful who you talk to when you're empty. See, when you date when you're empty, you end up with a soul tie and not a book. I'm just trying to help somebody. I'm just trying to help you. You got to be careful who you converse with when you're hungry, you've got to guard the garden of your conversation. Who has access to you? Who pours into you when you're empty? Because I'd be willing to bet that everybody can call you when they're struggling, but you can't find nobody. Talk to me in here if I'm talking to you. Every time you call, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't answer the phone. It was in my room and I missed it. No, it simply means that you only want me to be available when you need somebody, but you are not looking for me. I speak in your life right now that God is about to send somebody to you that's going to enhance your conversation. God's going to send somebody in your life that you can call a friend and it actually be a friend. Well, watch, watch this, Pastor Reg, it's the truth. Jesus is hungry, and here come the devil. He says, if you God, watch how he tempt, turn these stones into bread. Well, he's tempting them because if you're hungry, what do you want? Is this that bread from Grand Lux? <laughs> sure is. That's that, that's that bread from Grand Lux. That bread, y'all ever had that bread? When it's hot, it's fire, cuz. Let me tell you something. This church rich. All this bread is real. I thought this was fake. I'm joining this church. This is real. These grapes are real too. Wow. As soon as I touched it, I said it's soft. I thought it was fake. If you, if, if you are who you say you are, then turn these stones into bread. All right, well, if you are who you say you are, jump off this cliff, lest you dash your foot against the stone. Now, we're talking to a God who could have called 12 legions of angels. They would have called him before he hit the ground. It's a temptation. If you are who you say you are, bow to me, and I'll give you everything 
that you see. And when the devil said that, I knew then he didn't know who he was talking to. Because if you're going to tell God, I'll give you everything you see, I can think for God, he's probably saying, how you going to give me something that's already mine? I need everybody in here who knows it's already yours to spend about 18 seconds and shout, it's already. Give three people a high five and say, it's already yours. The house you've been thinking about, it's already yours. The dream person, it's already yours. The dream job, it's already yours. The health you've been praying for, it's already yours. It's already. Stop somebody say, it's mine, it's mine, it's mine, it's mine, it's mine. I might not have it yet, but it's mine. You don't see it yet, but it's mine. I claim it by faith. It is mine. Next time somebody offer you something, just tell them, you can't give me. <laughs> What's already mine? You, you can't, don't, don't worry about it, I don't need your car, because I already got one coming. I don't need you to pay my rent, because I'm about to be able to buy the whole building. I, I don't, I don't need, it's already mine. I'm just looking for somebody who got faith in here. Now, just find another faith person and tell them it's already, it's, already it's already yours. 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 The business is yours. The clientele is yours. The grant is yours. It's 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 yours. Fellowship, I don't know why I'm telling you, but whatever property you need to build a new church, it's yours. Now let me tell you what you told our church, new church, new church, new church. I see a building, he can't preach four and five times a Sunday, a new church. He's going to start from where Dr. Evans started and God is going to perfect a new work in him. Watch this, God is putting a Solomon anointing on him where he's going to be able to finish the temple. I don't know who I'm talking to in here today, but I need somebody to begin to give God some praise. I see it in this city. And that's why during this season of your life, you're going to be, have to be careful who you talk to. Because not everybody will be happy when you have the power to turn stones into bread. Because people who ain't built nothing hate people who build stuff. People who don't have nothing hate people who are walking into miracles. People who are on the bottom hate people who are on the top. And the only thing they don't recognize is that if they did what you did, they could get what you got. After you suffered a while. I got to finish. Having withstood the test of his creativity, having withstood the test of his conversation, now he's walking into the third garden. Watch this. The garden of your crisis. Now he's in the garden of Gethsemane. He's closer to the cross than he's ever been before. The vine is suffering separation anxiety from the husband man. Agonizing in tears caused by the future separation from his father. All of the gospels took care to place him in Gethsemane before he was betrayed by Judas but Matthew says he was in anguish preceding the moments of his arrest now here comes another garden transition 
from creation to conversation and now he has to guard his crisis because his suffering is so intense that he is suffering from a hematological advancement. The Bible says that he is sweating blood. This is an actual condition that you can actually go under so much stress that your skin separates from the epidermis. And now he is literally sweating blood out of his pores. And in an effort to keep his mission alive, when he now sees his own blood, he refuses to use his own power to stop his suffering. Oh God, watch this. Because if he uses his power when he's hurting, he will never be able to fulfill his destiny. Can I tell somebody in here that you have to be careful how you respond when you're hurting. Because just because you can destroy somebody doesn't mean you should. I help somebody. Y'all ain't here with me now. Don't let the enemy make you use your power at the wrong time. Because if you use it when you're hurting, you won't have it when it's time to be resurrected. Oh, you're not here with me today. Tell somebody, say, don't use your power at the wrong time. When Judas shows up in the garden of Gethsemane, watch this, before he shows up, Peter sees the Sanhedrin council coming. Y'all still with me? And Peter says, oh, he come. Now, y'all know Peter, he's really my favorite preacher. Not because of his sermons, but because he cussed. And he carried a knife. I don't suggest you do any of those, but if you do, I ain't going to be mad at you. <laughs> Peter sees him coming. Bishop, tell me if I'm wrong. He sees him coming. They come to put their hands on Jesus. Peter took out that army switch knife and said, <laughs> cut that man ear off. Jesus looks at him and says, Satan. Why would Jesus call a man who's defending him? Satan. I mean, he's fighting for him. And Jesus calls him Satan. And when he cuts the man's ear off, Jesus picks the ear up. Puts it back on. Why did he put the ear back on? The reason he put the ear back on is because the Bible says faith comes by Peter, you about to mess up. I'm getting ready to preach a sermon, and if he don't have no ear, he that has a... So Jesus puts his ear back on so he can hear the gospel. Meanwhile, Judas comes to betray him. And Jesus says to the man who's going to betray him, friend, whatever you came to do, so he calls the man that's defending him the devil, calls the man who betrays him friend. Can I just help some of y'all? You better stop thanking your friends and you better start thanking your enemies. Your friends ain't gonna get you to the cross. Your enemies will. You better start to thank God for the people that hate you because it's the people that hate you that are gonna help you develop the kind of prayer life you need to get through your situation. Matter of fact, when you get home, I want you to take out your laptop computer. I want you to create a hater application and I want you to go and just start passing them out. Please hate me because the Bible says he will make my enemies. So when I find people who cannot reach their destiny it's because they don't have enough. Oh, you missed it. He'll make my enemies my. So if you only have one enemy, you only go up one level. So if my destiny is up there, God, don't send me any more friends. Send me some more. Can I tell you, you're about to have more enemies in your life than you've ever had in your life. 
And the moment you have more enemies, the moment you're going to wake up and find out, I finally made it. Slap three people and say, I finally made it. That's why she don't like me. That's why they can't stand me. I'm doing the best I can, but God is trying to elevate you. Do me a favor. Look at your name and say, please don't like me. Please don't like me. Please don't like me. I want you to start hating me right now because you hating me is a sign that I'm on my way up. A death, listen, an enemy isn't somebody who hates you. An enemy is somebody who gets in the way of your destiny. If you get in the way of my cross, you have just become my enemy. Because at the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light and the burdens of my heart were rolled away, it was there by faith. Now I'm happy. They take him off the cross. And we see the anatomy of God being presented before us. For now, they stick a spear in his side and we see water and blood coming out of his side. Has the power to destroy them all, but he says, Father, if it is your will, let this bitter cup Pass for me, but nevertheless, not my will, hmm. but thy will be done. The Bible says he is now in the next place that you have to guard, which is the garden of your cave. He is in the cave. And John 19 and 41 says in the place where he was crucified, there was a garden and in the garden was Joseph's tomb. After he was crucified, two men show up and ask Pilate for permission to take him off the cross and embalm his lifeless body. One of them was Joseph of Arimathea. The other one you find in John 3, his name is Nicodemus. The Bible says that when he was walking as the Messiah, Nicodemus didn't want to have anything to do with him. In fact, Nicodemus followed him from a distance. He came at night. He didn't want anybody to see that he loved Jesus. So he showed up at night. Now that he's dead and he's on his way back up, the Bible says that Nicodemus asked for his body. I got a problem, Nick. When he was down, you didn't want to touch him. And now he's on his way up. Be careful with people who were not there when you were down, but all of a sudden want to touch you when you're up. Now, this is why this is important, because you remember that neighbor that wouldn't talk to you earlier? God's about to release miracles on you. Don't give him a high five. When you start to feel the blessings of the Lord in this church, I want you to look at him and say, back then you ain't want me. Now I'm hot you all on me. I prophesied that there are people in this room today that God is about to change your life. And there are blessings and miracles that are getting ready to come into your life. And you're going to have to be careful who you let touch you. I want you to find about five people on your row and give them a high five and say, we on our way up. 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 We on, we on our way up. We on our way up. If they didn't say nothing, find somebody and tell them, we on our way up. Now grab them by the hand and shout, neighbor, what God told me to tell you is that weeping may endure for a night, but joy is coming in the morning. Do you have the right neighbor? Because y'all about to rock this thing all the way together. I want you to find your praise partner. Look them right in the eye. Tell them, be not dismayed. Whatever betide you, God will take care of you. Do you believe it? You got the wrong neighbor. Turn and find another neighbor. Tell them, neighbor, God specializes 
in things that seem impossible. Did they shout? Man, this is, you just got a bad section. Turn and find somebody else. This your last shot. This one might be behind you. Say, neighbor, God told me to tell you everything gonna be all right. Did they shout? You found the right neighbor. Tell them, neighbor, the reason why I kept turning around is because every time I turn around, he keeps on blessing me. Ah! I feel the Holy Ghost. <laughs> I'm getting ready to leave y'all alone. But he went down in a grave. Stayed there all night. One Friday night. Stayed there all day. On Saturday. All night. Saturday night. But early Sunday morning. He got out the grave with all power. But that's not how the story ends. When he got out of the grave, there were no disciples there, but there was a prostitute with seven demons inside of her. And that's the person that God revealed himself to. Started in the dirt in the beginning, finished in the dirt in the end. I need you to find somebody who don't think they all let. I need you to find somebody who knows they made some mistakes. I need you to find somebody that knows that if it had not been for the Lord on their side, they would not be here today. And I want you to start to rejoice with them because God is about to reveal the future to somebody with a past. Y'all miss what I just said. If you are not perfect, open your mouth and begin to shout because you're the kind of person that God is looking to reveal himself to. Open your mouth. Shout yeah. Shout yeah. Shout yeah. 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 Guard your garden. Guard your garden. Guard your mind. Guard your peace. Guard your appetite. Don't let anybody make you eat something you're allergic to. I don't eat gossip. It don't help me. I don't do hating. You can hate, but I don't. I appreciate it. I don't throw people under the bus. You can do that. You got to guard your garden. You're growing. And you got to be careful who you let touch you when the sprout begins to bloom. People always love to grab things that are on their way up. Ignored them when they were laying down on the ground. You got to guard yourself. Guard your creativity. Don't let your idea out too soon. You just moved in their house. Don't post where you live just yet. You just got in that relationship. You ain't got it. Y'all ain't got to be on Instagram yet. And I'm just telling you, we live in this generation. You don't love me if you don't post me. Well, then I just can't love you because I'm waiting to make sure you're going to be around. I need you to guard your gardens. And the worse it smells, the more he's doing. I know you don't feel like it's your time because somebody told you when it's your time, you feel good. No, when it's your time, you're being nailed to the cross. When it's your time, they're putting a crown of thorns 
in your head. When it's your time, it's a cat of nine tails stabbing you in the back. When it's your time, you're carrying a 300 pound cross up a hill called Calvary. When it's your time, you're being betrayed by people you invited to the table. When it's your time, the people you've done the most for will say, I don't even know them. And that's when God is at work. Ask Job, though he slay me, yet will I trust in him. Man born of a woman is of a few days, and those few days are filled with trouble. If I could get the body of Christ to recognize that suffering is the signal that success is on the horizon, David got it. It was good that I was afflicted. Guard your gardens. Cry if you have to. <laughs> but guard your garden. Go away for a few days if you must but you show back up to the fight. Because the resurrection is coming for you. You will not be down forever. And if you're honest, you already see God changing it. But you're so addicted to the position you took that for fear that it may go back, you hold on to it. But anything you keep, God must take. If in this place, lift your hands as a sign of release. I surrender wrong. I surrender and wrong. Sit, Savior, I surrender. Come on, let's all sing it together. Whatever it is, just surrender. Say, I, I surrender. I surrender, surrender all, all. Blessed Savior, oh, I surrender. When I, um, when I think about this church, this is God's honest truth. I say this to the pastor all the time. And Pastor Sharp and I are not preaching buddies. We're friends, right? This is my friend. So what that means to me is that anybody who fighting him, they fight me. That's what friendship means to me. 
right? And he's the kind of guy, if you don't like him, there's something wrong with you. It's true. He's, he's just a genuine man who loves God and loves his people. And when I got here today, yeah, you can give it up for him. Give it up for him. When I got here today, like we got here, I, I seen all of the cars on the street. Some of y'all had to walk from Deer Park. Some of y'all walked from Ohio. I mean, just cars everywhere. I just, <laughs> just cars everywhere. I mean, literally, and it's cold. Not to y'all, but to me. <laughs> y'all probably like, it's springtime. It's, it's... Before I said hi to him, before I say, how you doing? First thing I ask him is, when are you gonna build? I said, where is the, where's the land at that you gotta build this church on? And we started talking, cause you gotta have somebody who will walk with you in faith. Amen. Pastor, if it is okay, we're in the building project as well. This is our third one. And I know what it takes to do it. And faith doesn't do it. Because you can't deposit faith. <laughs> I tried it. It don't work. I went to the bank, asked them, I want to put in a lot of faith. You can put it in, but you can't get it out. I want those of you who, are, who will to get a resurrection seed in your hand because I think we need to crack the glass on the prism that would allow us to see what the next reiteration of Fellowship Chicago looks like. And I sincerely believe that God's gonna do it in your lifetime. Call the architect and tell him to design the building because it's on the way. It's on the way. It's on the way. Anytime your building tells you how big your service can be, the building has become too small. And he's young now, but he won't be young forever. And if he preaches four and five times a week, he'll be older than he should be, quicker than he should be. Anybody want him to be here a long time? The Bible says in Psalms 112 that God will add a blessing to your house. I remember one day when we were building our building, people brought $112 seeds to the altar and we bought a building for six and a half million dollars. And in seven years, we have done a total of $20 million worth of building on that property. And ain't nobody ever wrote our church a $100,000 check. Nobody ever came in and wrote us a million dollar endowment. We, we, got, we got it $112 at a time. But what the people have gotten is that as they built God's house, God started to build their house. Am I telling the truth? Baby, am I telling the truth? I can't tell, can I, I'm trying to hurry up, I, but this is, this, is, this is so important what I'm getting ready to tell you. Pete, when we started doing this, I asked God to eliminate our members' debt so that they could be a part of it. Because it's hard to be paying bills. Like, how many of y'all know that debt will, it, it ain't that I don't want to, I just can't, I got too much. So I stood up in October of 2023 and God gave me a word and he put this anointing on my life to start speaking over people that their debt be eliminated. Y'all think I'm playing. I am not. I, I, Melvin, I promise you this is the truth. Everything is documented online. You can go back, back and watch every sermon on YouTube that I've preached since October. I've talked about it every single Sunday. If you've ever seen me say it online, just raise your hand if you've ever seen me. See, I got witnesses, y'all. And, and to date, 
from October of 2023 to today, I have spoken that word and $60 million worth of debt in our church has erased itself. Oh, you missed it. They didn't pay it off. They logged in to pay it and it was gone. I'm gonna say it again. They didn't write a check. They didn't use a credit card. They went in, logged in to the back office on the website and looked and it was a zero balance. And I speak the anointing of God on this house that you're gonna go into your student loan account and there will be a zero balance and God would have erased the debt. If you believe it, open your mouth and give a praise. I said, if you believe it, open up your mouth. Touch your favorite neighbor, tell them student loan debt, disappear, 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 disappear. Now let me tell you how anointed and prophetic that, that announcement was. You can go back and check it. I made the announcement in our church on Sunday that God told me that he was going to erase student loan debt. It's verifiable. The next Sunday, Joe Biden released a press release that he was gonna start reducing debt. If you don't believe me, go check it. He just released another statement that he's about to forgive another five billion. I have a sneaky suspicion that somebody in this room is in that number. Touch somebody and say, it's gotta be, it's gotta be me, it's gotta be me. I can feel it. I got the faith for it. I got the heart for it. I got the vision for it. I've got the plan for it. I want to see what the sound of debt-free Christians sound like. I don't owe nobody but to love them. I don't have a car note, I don't have a house note, I don't have a medical bill, I don't have a credit card bill, I owe nobody anything. Somebody shout, I got my car's cash. And we did it, $112 at a time. Now I got people in the church that are financially free saying, Pastor, what are we building next? Because this is what I found out about the people of God. When you give the people of God the facts, they will do the right thing. I want everybody in here who can to get $112 in your hand. Those of you who can't get 12, that's all. If you don't have 12 and you got two, your neighbor got 10. Ask them to let you hold it permanently. Let me hold 10 permanently. I am not paying you back. I just want you to know this is not a loan. This is a gift from God through you. And I want you to get that gift in your hand. And I want you to bring it to this altar. Pastor, we are going to crack the debt ceiling on this place. You're going to have millionaires start popping up everywhere. Any millionaires in the balcony, holler at your boy. It's some millionaires in overflow. Yeah, look at them. Look at all those millionaires. Look at them. Show them what millionaires look like, Overflow. Show them how it goes. Show them how it goes. Look at that. <laughs> when you get that gift, whether you're using your phone or whether you're giving it an envelope, we're going to leave from the altar. Is that all right, Bishop? You got any announcements? Okay, so we're going to leave in prayer. So when you get your gift, bring your purse with you. Don't leave it in your seat now. Put your shoes on. Start getting your jacket ready. Get, get ready, because we're about to break. We're about to break ground. Somebody say break ground. This, this is the youth church we're in right now. This is the youth church. 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 This, this church has done all it can do for you. This building's done all it can do. You, got, you, get, you need a parking lot too. 
And let me tell you something, this is what I see. I want you to build a parking lot because you're going to lease it to the city. They're they going to use it when you ain't using it. They're going to have to pay you for it. Make it concrete, stripe it. And whatever this old, it's an old building around here that needs to be torn down. It's going to be torn down. Tear down the, where, the, where the gym is or whatever that building is, it's got to go. It's got to go. It's got to go. I want you to, I want you to, I want you to get ready. I want you to get ready. What's, what's the name of this park across the street? Fuller? Yeah, because God has been telling you the whole time. Fuller, Fuller. He's been telling you the whole time. Fuller, Fuller, Fuller. But you gotta give me something to feel. You gotta give me something to feel. You gotta give me something to feel. High five, somebody say Fuller, Fuller, Fuller. It's been speaking to you the whole time. Hallelujah. All right. I'm telling you, when it's all said and done, history will remember Reggie Sharp Jr. Y'all don't, y'all don't, you can play if you want to. I know when God got his hand on somebody. All right. Y'all got your gift? Bring it to the altar. Watch this faith, Bishop. Watch this faith. And I'm calling you Bishop because I see multiple locations. That's just me prophesying. Bring it, bring it. Stay with me because I'm going to pray for you. Everybody who has it, come. Stay with me. Stay with me. Don't leave. Stay. We're coming. We're leaving from here. Bring your gift. Bring your gift. Stay with me. Stay with me. Stay with me. God has smiled on me. He has set me free. God has smiled on me oh yeah oh say it one more time say God has yes he has he said I pray that God will add a blessing to your house. I pray that young people will not be yoked with student loan debt for the next 20 years of your life. I speak right now in the name of Jesus that the debt is being erased. I speak right now that the, the medical bills are going to be paid off. Can I tell you how big it's going to be? A lady in our church had a $30 million debt for breast cancer. The Lord told me to pray over her. She went to check her bill. She went in. $29,995,000 of it disappeared. It went from $30 million down to $5,000. And when she gave her testimony, she said, you said God was going to pay it all. He almost did. We only have 5,000. I said, God didn't lie because my wife and I are about to give you the five. And then we're going to give you another 10 for your, for your daughter and her husband. Because God ain't going to just give you enough. He'll give you overflow. I'm talking to somebody. Everybody got your gift? Spirit of the living God, this is your church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Touch your manservant as he leads this place to higher heights and deeper depths. Send him thousands from the east, the west, the north, and the south. And we are about to build you something to feel. These people that we see today in this place will be a part of breaking the ground and the history-making campaign that will set this church on the trajectory that will make this city come to its knees and come crying, what must I do to be saved? Every person who sacrificed today, 
We pray, God, that they would not lack anything, that you would give it back to them 100-fold. In the mighty name of Jesus, dismiss us from this place, never from your divine presence. Allow us to get home and find everything in order. In Jesus' name we pray. Come on, somebody shout amen in this place today. You can go in peace. Hug somebody on your way out. Tell them I love you. Ain't nothing you can do about it.